Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel, Adam and Orange, and welcome to another Iconics review video. Today we are gonna to talk about this Humvee build right here. Just fairly recently put this together. I've got a couple of build videos out for it. It is a little bit of an older Iconics model, and the Iconics name is going away, but this is what we're talking about today. And probably gonna remind you a few times that this is an older model because it's, it's a part of this review one of the first things I noticed when opening up and getting ready to build this model was the instructions I mean how can I not look at the instructions when I'm getting ready to build this model and I think it even made made some comments in the build video in part one that the instructions for this are an older style the most most notable thing the thing that stands out the most is there's no coloring in the sheet. So these these instructions are bef from before Metal Earth started color coding like parts or coloring in like parts with the same color. They didn't do that for this. Not a big deal. I didn't have problems finding parts, but it's noteworthy that these these instructions are old enough that they didn't did not do that. But then looking further into the instructions when it comes to how to shape and fold parts, the instructions seem a bit vague. And I'd wonder, and I still do wonder a little bit, if it's just a matter of now that I've started a new job and there was a bit of a hiatus, an unintentional but unavoidable hiatus of building models. So maybe I got a little bit rusty because I kind of got out of it just trying to focus on other things. I'm not building like I once did. So maybe I'm a little rusty. That, that's still quite possibly part of it. But I really do feel that these older instructions lack some of the detail that I've become accustomed to with the newer instructions. Now this isn't meant to insult Metal Earth. These are older instructions. What I'm saying is that Metal Earth has come a long way in the past few years with their instructions, with the detail they include, especially how to shape parts with notations and whatnot. And I'm, there were some notations in here, but it just wasn't the level that I've gotten accustomed to with, say, the newer Star Wars models that I keep bringing up because there's so much detail in those. So I did scratch my head a bit more than usual and I did kind of wonder and struggle a little bit to make sure I understood how to shave things because there are areas where parts are highlighted in kind of an orange color to say this is being shaped or bent and there's areas that are not. There's even one area in step seven that shows a part like a close-up of a part that I've already added on highlighted. What am I supposed to do with this information? Am I supposed to somehow further bend that part? I really don't know what that little circle with the highlighted part two is trying to tell me to do. I really don't know. I just kind of moved on and left that alone. And, and prior to step seven with step three, it was it took a little bit of studying and scratching my head to completely understand how to shape the gun, specifically part four, because it's just kind of a I don't want to say optical illusion, but it just, it wasn't as clear as I'm used to, and it folded in a way different than I expected, and it took me a little bit to make, to really understand where I'm supposed to be folding it at. It's not terribly hard to figure out, it just kind of threw me for a loop. Of course, if you're having problems, watch my build videos, and you'll see how I do it. But it's, again, not as straightforward as I'm accustomed to. As you get past the gun, you shape the top part, there's some bits added on here and there. I initially shaped this inside out or backwards and had to fix it, no big deal. I did have some trouble right from the start, adding on the hood and folding up, actually I should say folding up these two half circles and then later adding on the hood because those half circles did not just want to bend up at the seam. They wanted to kind of warp and twist and I had to fight with straightening that out. When you've got grill pieces and whatnot you have to put together pretty stress simple and straightforward and easy to do and eventually you start building the cabin the inside area of the vehicle and there is one piece part 18 that I'm honestly not sure if I folded the bottom of that correctly or not it's buried down in there and so you can barely see it so I don't really care but the instructions show that it's that the bottom part of that is to be bent but it does not clearly show how it's to be bent. It seems to kind of indicate that it bends forward, but it could have been backwards. It doesn't really show. And if if it is folding forward, that's kind of covered up by the little arrow bubble thing that's showing you the part. So again, just 
it's not as clear as what I'm accustomed to. I folded it forward and it ended up fitting just fine and again I moved on. The wheels were interesting. The wheels themselves, pretty simple, straightforward to put together. This inner piece was easy to shape using one of the cone shaping combo tools that I have. But the sort of knuckle that holds the wheel on that's sandwiched in this part to front and back is actually pretty cool. Took me one try, the first try, um, didn't fold things in the best order, but was able to fix it. The next few tries I fold them in a good order. A little bit of a struggle getting it on there. But I really like the knuckle design because it makes these wheels really sturdy. They're not, they're not flexing. So many times I've built vehicles and the wheels were just on a thin square piece that easily got bent as you're building the rest of the model. And so when you set it down, the wheels kind of, you know, push out of shape. The wheels on this are dead solid. I mean, yeah, could I bend them out of shape? Yes, but they're not going to be easy. You set this thing down, the wheels are going to look just fine. A bit of a weird design, but I love the way the steering knuckle is and how it's sandwiched between. You put it in the bottom part, the top part folds over, and it's sandwiched in there. It's fantastic. I love that. I would like to see more of that design in future builds. While it might be a little bit more complex, it is so sturdy. That is probably my favorite thing about this build is how sturdy the wheels are on this just because of, let's see, it's part 19 and 25. And 19 connects to the wheels on the driver's side and 25 is the same part, I guess, mirrored. And it connects to, the two wheels that it connect to go on the passenger side so that everything's oriented correctly. And speaking of the wheels, this is the bottom body part, 28. It shows the part then it shows it folded, no orange highlights to indicate. It's not hard to figure out, but just an example of what I'm saying is not clear. It's not very clear, like newer instructions, that you're supposed to fold that down. No arrows to go with it, no orange highlights. I did have a little bit of a trouble with that because I tried to use a trick that I use on a lot of models that have bases, where I push the base against the table to fold the entire side over. I tried it with this. It wasn't a good idea. I had to straighten it back out and do it more carefully with uh, pliers and whatnot. I would rather imagine most people aren't going to make that mistake, but if you do, if you're thinking about pushing the whole thing against the table to bend it, maybe not the best of plans. And these bit pieces that go around the windows were delicate and warp easy, and the first two that I did kind of knocked them out of shape. The second two for the other side, when I did those, I spent more time making sure I was holding the part with the tool, bending it over with something else so that it bent more cleanly and that was pretty easy to do. Should have done that with the first one, didn't, struggled a little bit, but you know, straightened out, no big deal. And then the final annoying piece is when you get to doing this exhaust. And the exhaust curls under and is supposed to go in a hole under here, which I didn't initially get. I didn't look ahead in the instructions. Um, I should have been able to just push it in there later after putting it on, but I never could quite manage that. The circle wouldn't fit, and I just stopped fussing with it. But it, this exhaust is made up of one long straight piece, short piece here, um, I think there's, and then there's this double bent piece right here. So I think it's just three pieces that make that up. And it took a while to wrap those around a drill bit and flatten those pliers to try and pinch it and shape it. and. I think one of the things that may have happened with this piece right here, part 41, when I was shaping it, I may have twisted it slightly from top to bottom, and that kind of knocked it out of kilter. That may be part of my problem why things didn't seem to want to line up. This top bit, you've curled both ends around into the circle, and then you're supposed to bend it. Didn't want to bend. Had to fight with that. Kind of almost warped it a little. The bottom piece similar, it's three sections that all curve into the same comb or, or cylinder shape, but then you've got three different angles you have to bend. And it was a bit of a fight to bend those properly. And the three connect together and then it connects on the side. And when I connected on the side, it was very much, the exhaust was sticking towards the back. I had to coax it and bend it over. Again, it, it still needs to go into its hole, but I never could manage that. And I just kind of, kind of gave up fighting with it 
this point I think the only thing I could do was would be to get in there with some tweezers and try to squeeze that end a little bit smaller and cram it in there but I'm going to call it good and leave it at that because from the top you're really not going to see it only if you look underneath is it really going to stand out plus if I push it all the way over there it pretty much runs into the wheel which doesn't make sense at all so this was a request for me to build some time back I had a list of stuff and I've been slowly working through it might not have ever gotten to this on my own just because I'm not a I mean nothing wrong with the Humvee I'm just not a bottle that I was gravitating towards wanting to build but I'm glad I'm glad somebody requested it and I'm, I'm happy to do it and I'm glad to have this in my collection uh, it is bigger than I expected it is a pretty neat looking model I'm really thrilled again with how the wheels and knuckles that hold the wheel on come together that's really fantastic the instructions you know it, I'm not going to say the instructions are bad it just shows going back to this older model really shows how much Metal Earth has improved the newer instructions and how much I've kind of been spoiled and missed the detailed information or more detailed information than what they had with this model it's a pretty solid model fairly sizable and a nice little build once you get past a few of the challenges and really the challenges aren't that that big it's it's more of a just making sure you understand how something is shaped because you, you may have to rely more on the 360 view in the pictures than the instructions normally just because of the lack of explicit detail in these instructions if I had to do this over again what would I do differently It'd be nice to have a second try of the exhaust and maybe not warp it and it come out more properly maybe test fit that hole before I finish and put everything on didn't, didn't do that didn't think and look ahead to see to do that maybe give another shot to these side windows since I partially warped one side not doing it properly but overall I'm fairly satisfied with how this come together a little bit of a mishap here and there but aside from the exhaust I'm pretty satisfied with how this come together it's a nice model probably never going to be one of my favorites not a bad model at all and that's definitely impacted by just my lack of appeal for this particular style of model is this huge almost ridiculous bulky looking thing but I don't want to be insulting it so I don't know anything about the Humvee I've never served I've never been in one I don't know the details behind it probably exactly what it needed to do and a fantastic machine just you know the whole thing about you know I want to buy a Hummer for driving on the street seems completely ridiculous to me that's just my opinion and also note it kind of looks like you might be able to open this top piece and maybe fold it but I didn't do that actually I just kind of accidentally pushed it in and it looks like the back doors might open as well if you wanted to do that but again I'm not gonna bother at least one back door looks like it might open it's that's interesting I'm not gonna mess with it it does look like it has some seams that the back doors might be able to open or fold out or something but I'm gonna leave it as it is it's gonna get added to the shelf behind me and you know another one another one of the many wonderful fascination metal earth models in my collection I'm gonna leave it at that as always I'm gonna leave it at that as always if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them down below this is a pretty short review because it's not a very complex model and, and most of it's just me talking about how much the instructions were different back then and how much I wish they were more improved in the end it took just under three hours I think it was two hours and 50 minutes to completely put this model together which really isn't bad for an Iconics model that's average maybe somewhat under average just less than three hours and possibly could have done it faster if I had a better grasp on some of the things and maybe not made a couple of mistakes like folding the antenna on the back backwards two hours and 50 minutes for an Iconics model not bad at all that's kind of quick and you end up with this sizable neat looking model to display on your shelf desk or whatever and that about wraps it up thank you for watching as always thank you to my patreon supporters for continuing to support to this channel if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them down below and as always keep on keeping on